Hello everyone, I am Ahmed Awes and I'm super excited to be here for the second time on the next year's conference stage. And today I'm going to be talking about building the developer relations stack entirely with Next.js. But before we go ahead and jump into the details of that, how about I introduce myself a little bit so you know where I'm coming from and why I'm building everything with Next.js. So I am an award-winning open source engineer. I've been writing open source code for over 10 years now. I've written all hundreds of projects. A lot of them are CLI. Uh, one of them is a Shades of Purple code theme or a Corona CLI. And millions of developers are using my code which is a humbling feeling I cannot even explain. A really teeny bitty, you know, bit of a code that I actually contributed to open source ended up on Mars. So I think I can claim the status of being a Martian, right? Anywho, I am a Google developers expert, uh, the recipient of eighth GitHub Gold Star Award. And I've been around the blog. I'm, I'm really excited about the web platform. I'm a web purist. And the fact that Next.js is building the next generation of, you know, sort of like software development kit for web, it, it just excites the hell out of me. I also love to teach developers. If you go to nodeclicom you can learn everything I know about JavaScript and automation to build your CLIs. Or if you go to vscode.pro, you can learn from me how to become a VS Code power user. Right now, I'm working on a nextjsbeginner.com course. Uh, which uh, I'm super excited about, but let's hope I can finish it in time for next year. As far as my day job is concerned, I'm part of the executive leadership team here at Rapid API as their senior director. I'm the head of developer relations. I, we are like about five or six people in Devrel right now, and I'm still hiring. If you go to avast.dev slash hiring, you can read all about that. Everything we are trying to do here in the developer relations team is based on Next.js. And there are very much, you know, super valid reasons of why I have chosen Next.js to be the entire core of our DevRel stack. And that is exactly what I want to talk about today, building your developer relations stack with Next.js. In case you don't know what developer relations is, it's, it's like this really awesome field where you can be a teacher and you can influence the improvement of developer experience around the entire chaos that exist in building literally anything. If you're building anything, there's one service that is broken, there's this language that is just not working, there's this entire chaos that we work with. And services like Wurzel and frameworks like Next.js actually help us improve the entire developer experience. The, you know, kind of master that chaos around what we feel like when we are, as users, developers, we are sitting around and building something. Same thing we do for APIs here at Rapid API. And since I joined Rapid API, one of the things I really wanted to do was explain and teach APIs in a different manner. So you see, there is Rapid API Hub, which is the world's largest hub for APIs. We have 35,000 APIs and over 3 million developers are using these APIs. So you can consider it like a hub, uh, just like GitHub, but for APIs, yet you can also sell APIs there and make a lot of money, right? So there's business involved in there. So one of our products is a Rapid API Hub where developers go to list their APIs or to use APIs listed by other developers. And then if a developer wants to learn this thing, what they have to do is either they are left with our documentation or our API reference. There's nothing there in the middle where eager developers or discerning developers could go beyond the product or the documentation and learn through either interactivity, through videos, or whatever you know their preference is. So I, along with my team, decided to build something what we are internally calling a DevRel stack, a bunch of products built inside DevRel, which influence your learning, the entire learning platform, and the knowledge you attain as an API developer. This platform that we are building with Next.js does not only help you master what an API is, but it actually helps you improve that chaotic experience into an improved developer experience when you're either trying to learn or build something. Here's one of the projects, as you can see. This is not a production ready right now. We are hoping to launch it on 1st November. But what do you see in front of you right now is what we call guides, right? These are interactive guides filled with content that you want on a particular topic. But the fun thing about it is 
that they use a lot of interactive components. As you can see right now, this is this project is actually in its infant stage. There are community members like Saad and uh, our devil team member like Pratham are currently building content for this baby project right now that we have. What we are building here is this interactive content, but either smaller or longer form of content that is based on one single topic. While this might just look like a blog to you, there is a lot going on behind it. This is based on SSG. This is mostly static content with a flavor of client-side rendered components that actually help you improve everything that you're trying to learn. For example, OpenAPI spec, right? And everything you see here is powered by Markdown. So all of these are either React components and most of the content writers that people who are writing content is coming from Markdown. And while this might look like a random block to you, the technology that's powering it, the read more, the relative uh, suggestions that is com coming from here are all based on Next.js. And there's a particular algorithm that we have been able to build. We are using Next.js image component here and the script loader, which has made the entire experience really useful. And the real user experience has improved a hell lot. It's not just that using Next.js, the script component, the images, optimized images in everything, it, it kind of builds this entire productivity stack for writing content where your content not only looks good, feels good, is interactive, but also has a really good SEO power or SEO juice in it. Because it Next.js, the script component, especially the script component, takes care of a lot of things for the core web vitals, the new Google, you know, SEO ranking parameters or the, or the parameters on how Google actually measures the real user experience where something like Versal Analytics also come in. Another project inside this DevRel stack is our video LMS platform, which is also based on Next.js. As, as you can see, a lot of really good community members like Arian, JavaScript Mastery, Jessica, Siraj, Course Tracker, Jesse, Catalan, and a, a lot of members have actually gone ahead and produced excellent quality content on turning your APIs into a startup and selling them on Rapid API. What we wanted to provide our developers who are trying to learn this skill from the get-go is this kind of experience where they can see everything in different modules and learn it in the way they prefer. So now what might look like a simple video embed to you, Next.js actually helps us derive this kind of new experience around learning that, enabling us to distribute the content in different modules and helping users mark particular module as complete, as you can see at the bottom here. All of this is being built with Next.js and the core that powers this is actually Markdown. So if you have a video, if our developer team creates a video, they can actually use a simple Markdown file to split that video into different modules, not only host it on YouTube, but also hosted on our particular platform to own that part of the content. And the fun actually doesn't really stop here. What I've shown you is just part of this particular monorepo, different projects that share different components. And, and this right here, what you see is an interactive guide, a learn platform that we are building. For example, if you're trying to learn about HTTP and different methods like the post request, a user, a developer can not only just read about it, but if you go down here, you can see, you can play around with this interactive component. So if I zoom down here, a developer could come here, learn the post request method for the first time and create different kind of data through this particular interactive component. As you can see, the response body includes my name and my job through the small, tiny little interactive component right here. This helps you learn by doing. And at the bottom, as you can see, there are quizzes in all of this information, that is actually helping developers learn in a really good way. We have also tried to gamify this experience at the dark and light modes, which look really awesome and are super, super easy to do with Next.js. And the moment I move to the next lesson, you can see the post request lesson has been tick marked as complete, as something that you have actually learned. And you are able to not only just read about it, you are able to send request and understand this particular part of API development in an extremely deep and careful way. 
And this is exactly what we are trying to build with a bunch of different things. This is not documentation. This is like a stack that is sort of like projects-based learning where Next.js has helped us produce this really performant, blazing fast experience around something which is not documentation. It's sort of like courses in eBooks mixed together on the web platform shown to you in different manners. For example, here is this React component, which is taking a bunch of data from our Rapid API Hub. So this is Rapid API Hub, and this is a particular Crunchbase API listed on it that you could use. As you can see, the latency and service level this particular API offers. On our DevRel stack, what we can do is whenever someone mentions this, it renders as this particular React component with this information listed there on the client side. Some of it is on the client side, some of it is server side rendered, and some of it is for the sake of SEO, completely statically generated. In case you want a review of what that is, we are using CSR with Next.js to load components that are where we just render a small page with no dynamically loading data. You see a loading state and then the page displays everything using an API. For some other pages we are using SSR, mostly these components are the components where we want to authenticate some part of the workflow where the API is either non-existent or either the API is only internal. For example, if you want to create an account on Rapid API Hub and do a, you know, send a particular request to a particular API, instead of doing all of that, we can authenticate your request through a particular server pipeline using the SSR server side rendered pages in Next.js. And now we, without even authenticating you, we are able to show you a sandboxed experience of what it feels like to either sell, host, or, you know, use APIs that are hosted on Rapid API, right? And SSR is super, super helpful there. But there are also documentation pages here, as you have seen in guides or in the LMS, where the SSG static site generation comes in super handy. For the basic part, the static site generation is the server generates the entire website for us. There is like no dynamic data for the client side process. But there is also incremental static regeneration, where as you know, we have like 35,000 different APIs and we want to build documentation or information site for that. We are able to use ISR for that. In our DevRel stack, we are using incremental static regeneration in a very creative way. ISR or incremental static regeneration is where you can use a fallback true parameter. And what it does is the server generates the page defined on a particular path on the build time. If that path particularly exists in your source code, right? And if that path does not exist, what it does is shows you the loading state, sends a request to that particular API, generates the JSON and hydrates the data for you at that particular instant. But the second time you visit that particular page, it now has a static cached copy of that particular page, right? You see, I never really liked the fact that all of my images in Markdown is hosted with the code repository. While it's easier and fun, there's no database that you need to care about. It's more kind of more secure per se, but for content writers, or if you are that particular content writer editing a particular post, you have to worry about downloading all of those assets in all of the GitHub repository. And it's just kind of a big mess when you're trying to just add a blog post inside of a GitHub repository. So what we have been able to build is a module that we plan to share with you folks soon, which allows us to actually keep our images, data, all of the data in a separate GitHub repository and all of our code, including a monorepo based on Lerna that Virtual supports in a separate GitHub repository. So if you are part of the marketing team or content team writing content for this particular stack, all you really care about is markdown files and images. You do not see any of the code. But if you are a programmer, if you're trying to improve this UI, as you can see here, if you're trying to build new uh, ways of interactive content that developers are going to use, you only care about the code not the data, not the, you know, images or a markdown or what have you. And that is a fun part. Like a build script is able to generate a JSON API at the build time. And as soon as someone visits this page, ISR method, using the ISR method, we can also use a 
fallback for new guides, for new things that our content writers are writing in a completely separate repository. And that, folks, is a whole lot interesting. And that is like things like these are what makes me super, super excited about the future of web development with something like Next.js. And just like that, with CSR, SSR, and SSC, we are able to build an activation developer stack. So you see, millions of developers are already consuming our content, but this stack is actually activating them, allowing them to learn by example, learn by doing, or learn by watching, or whatever their preference is. We are able to render things on client side, or we are able to creatively use the ISR method to bring data from different sources into a particular single GitHub repository, which is completely separate from code. I'm personally really excited about all of the things that Next.js has enabled us to do without ever worrying about, you know, image optimizations, webpack configurations, or anything really. We, we have had this entire stack in TypeScript, and we don't worry about our types of configurations because Next.js has kind of tucked those configurations away from us so we can focus on building awesome projects like this. I am really excited about what we are going to launch early next month here at Rapid API using Next.js. If you're excited about something that I have presented, if you have more questions, you can reach out to me on Twitter. I'm mostly active there at Mr. Ahmad OS. And I'm really excited about the future of web per se with all of the creative components that Next.js have made super, super simple through all of this innovation in just the last couple of years. A small team here at Rapid API is able to build massive projects like these without a lot of effort and with an excellent developer experience. We are building our entire developer relations stack with Next.js. And if you are interested in something like this, go ahead and visit avast.dev slash hiring or reach out to me on Twitter and let's be friends there. I've seen developers think of Next.js as this one single thing. You know, it's either built for static sites or for dynamic sites or for only web apps. But as you can see, it's not Jamstack. It's, I think it's, I, and I completely believe it's much more than Jamstack. It's Jamstack and beyond Jamstack. You can not only build your entire landing page, your blog, your marketing stack for Next.js, but you can actually try and build your SaaS app, your actual application with Next.js. And that is exactly what I kind of predict is going to happen next. We are going to consume the entire documentation stack with Next.js and then our marketing site and parts of different products that are based on web, right? Using Next.js. If you have any question related to that, and if you're excited about what we are building, reach out to me on Twitter. And with that, I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed my talk. Take care. Bye. Peace.